Hello everyone and welcome to the Aircraft Certification Channel. There's a lot going on about urban mobility and how eVTOLs, drones and flying cars will emerge into our daily lives and completely change our society in the near future. But what challenges do we have to face to see this becoming a reality? So we decided to create a series of videos to address this subject. And the first one is an extract of a video about particular risk analysis where Ansel James uh, brings to the table the new risks that will need to, take in, to be taken into consideration when developing an eVTOL. Ansel James is a system safety specialist and his link will be in the description area. If you haven't watched his video yet, there is a link that will appear in your screen. I'm Rafaela Caio and I would love to hear your comments and feedback. Please subscribe to this channel and click in the bell to receive a notification every time we upload a new video. So welcome on board and enjoy your journey. Considering that the systems are getting more and more and more integrated, yes. principally with all these electronics and control boxes doing multifunction things, how this affect the PRA? How this affect the compliance, show compliance with the particular risks? With new technologies, uh, especially the big, there's a big challenge, especially with new technologies um, and new types of aircraft that don't have, uh, that the regulations weren't designed to address initially. Uh, there's, you're gonna, the, Aircraft developers are on the forefront. They are leading the authorities in showing compliance to these new and novel uh, technologies. Uh, so it is incumbent upon the, the aircraft designers to understand the different failure modes and the effects of the, the failures on the aircraft and be able to, to mitigate them somehow. Uh, and that's a discussion you have to have with the authorities. Um, you can have like for example the eVTOL aircraft those types of aircraft they're not many you know EOS has a special condition for them they'll be uh, under part 23 um, uh, so you those developers that are on the forefront of those developing those technologies and those type of uh, the propulsion systems the, the flight control systems so do you mean that um with these new technologies for some new risk uh, may, be may, may be listed or, or and some will not be applicable anymore? Or? Yes, yes, and that's, that's a discussion that the, the developers will have to have with the, with the authorities once they understand things like uh, their flight envelopes because some of these aircraft are they they don't come into land like a traditional aircraft they don't operate as a as a helicopter so they're in between so they have, need to understand their envelopes and where the critical cases are the critical conditions for those new types of, of vehicles are so that they can uh, identify and address the any particular risk that may occur it's like particular risks like lightning strike bird strike um, if they have a Maybe if, if they have a hard landing, some of them may not have tails, but maybe a hard landing, for example. Or, or if they lose, a lot of them are, uh, have electric motors uh, that power uh, multiple fans, multiple either ducted fan or just open rotor. So those guys will have to be able to, to show that, you know, for different scenarios, like maybe they'll lose, if they lose a rotor blade, that they have to show that the aircraft is can continue safe flight and landing uh, in the operating in a degraded condition. Okay, and uh, when you're talking about fire, you mentioned about different type of fire. So then I, I just let that for the end, because <laughs> we have uh, not um, some recent uh, events with uh, fire related mm -hmm. with batteries, and also we have all this. If it all that you just mentioned about the challenge of new technology, so how do you think that uh, this will affect the uh, fire in batteries uh, hazard uh, and how show compliance is the regulations or yes. this is ongoing discussion? Yes, this 
this is uh, these will be um, topics that will be covered that will have to be covered by the authorities in in greater detail. It'll be a little bit more specific uh, because there's there will be a wide range of uh, battery configurations, um, uh, battery charging systems, especially. Um, and just how the batteries are, are carried on the aircraft and how they're protected. Um, there, as you know, there are different types of batteries. There are nickel metal hydride batteries, there are lithium polymer batteries, there are um, NICAD batteries. Uh, so each of these, it, will, it may depend on how the aircraft developers decide to use the batteries. And of course, the voltages on these newer batteries for these newer electrically driven systems will be very high. Um, they'll be much higher than uh, they'll be much higher than the, 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 the typical 28 volt system that you have on, on existing aircraft. They'll be up in the, the 400, uh, 200 to 400 volt uh, range, maybe even higher. Um, and of course, there'll be multiple systems, and the systems may or may not be driven by those uh, high energy power sources. So they'll you have they'll have to look at it holistically, and I think that maybe where the authorities are, I wouldn't say struggling, but, but will need to work closely with the aircraft developers to understand the architecture and how each of these uh, new systems will be integrated into the aircraft and what their functions will be. Okay, so that they need to keep following the development and those yes. certification and see how the authorities will handle that. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much for being here with us and share your knowledge about this so interesting subject. No, thank you, Clarissa. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I hope you had enjoyed your journey. <laughs>